to the line of scrimmage. There won't be a whole lot of time likely between plays since McNeese runs the air raid offense. Big hole up the middle and the spin for Johnson. Gets to the outside and into McNeese territory for a first down, down to the 42. And he is the motion man. He's a decoy for Johnson. Another big hole down inside the 25. They've already surpassed their rushing total on this drive than these running backs had all of last week. And it's Johnson again tugging a defender down inside the 20. Two of those tight ends will line up in the backfield. Montrell's got it. Right up the gut. Touchdown, Florida. Nate Glantz will get the start again, the junior out of Elkhorn, Nebraska, who spent some time in junior college as well as at Iowa State. And the Florida Gators are on high alert after a touchdown allowed on the very first play of the game last week. Nate Glantz checking over to the side with head coach Gary Goff and OC Adam Neugebauer. This is the air raid. He is a Hal Mummy, Mike Leach, disciple, and Durham breaking tackles into the secondary and into Florida territory. D'Angelo Durham, 6'1", 208 from Augusta, Georgia. He's a downhill runner. He finds the space that's needed, and all of a sudden, you see the power that he runs with. 28 yards, that's their longest rush through their first two games. Durham 14 for 45 last week in a score in their loss to Tarleton State. And run it again. Wrapped up after a gain of about three. And twice the Cowboys played for the national championship. And the pass on second down incomplete. Lance was looking for John McCall. Jalen Kimber. One of the few upperclassmen on this defense had the coverage. They do not have a senior on their three deep. <laughs> and they have, what, 22 new guys. This is a critical third down for them to get off the field. Princely jumped off the left edge. Must have gotten back, no flag. They tried the deep ball down to the five, and it's broken up. Kimber again had the coverage on John McCall, and it's fourth down. Yeah, I'm looking for the flag that was on the play. I thought, like you mentioned, Princely Outside. jumped off sides. Defense number one, five-yard penalty. But officials did not down. call it. Looks like he did call it now. His microphone's not working. Okay, now it is. Quarterback will keep, and he's met in the backfield and thrown down by Oman Mielen. Wow. <laughs> you talk about reading the play. That's how you do it. It's Tyreek Sapp. He's the right defensive end. He got up the field and forced Glantz to have to make a decision. There's just nowhere to go. Fourth down, they're going to go. D'Angelo Durham off the left side, and he's got it. First down, Cowboys. Trying to focus on their own game. Find some fixes. Certainly not an easy environment against an SEC foe to do it in. That's Cam Thomas on the call. Jaden Hill's already got a handful of stops for that Florida defense. Well, he's playing out there in space. So when you spread the offense out for McNeese, they've got two receivers up top, two receivers at the bottom. Jaden Hill, he's splitting the difference between the left tackle or the right tackle and also the receiver. He sees run, he go on attack. If they pass, he stays out in coverage. Nice job by Jaden Hill early on in this game. Six of their seven plays have been runs. 40 yards on the ground on their first possession. Lance fires to the edge and it's broken up, almost picked, and it's Jaden Hill again. <laughs> getting over to cover Marcus Peterson, and it's third down and eight. If he reads that perfectly, he can undercut that route and take it the distance. Third and eight here at the Swamp. Florida shows pressure off the edge. They're coming after Glantz. Gets to the outside and then is hammered for a big loss. Back out across the 40-yard line. Scooby Williams decked him, and it's fourth down. If you hold it for one extra second, Watch number 17 in the middle of the screen, Scooby Williams. He's the spy on the quarterback. Quarterback gets out of the pocket. You see him attack and bring him down. That's a huge sack on third down. And Ricky Pearsall is the deep man here on fourth down, back around his 10-yard line. 
Kalem Eddings boots it away. Oh, and it takes a good cowboy bounce inside the five, and they'll down it there at the one-yard line. 41 yards on the punt. Perfect from Eddings. Three rushes of over 10 yards, and it's Trevor Etienne who will open up this drive out of his own end zone. And he'll carry it out to the eight-yard line. Levi Wyatt with the stop for over 200 yards per game. Of course, last year that would have been with Billy Napier. And a first down run out close to the 15. Grayson Mays able to wrap up Trevor. Of course, he's the younger brother of Travis who will uh, get things rolling with Jacksonville tomorrow. The yes, Jaguars. <laughs> Absolutely. Opening up against uh, Indian Anthony Richardson, right? Yeah, Anthony yeah, Richardson, Colts Jaguars. Quarterback, yeah. ETN will stay out there. Trey Wilson is in the slot. That is Pearsall in motion. And here's a touch for Trey. And he's got another first down out across the 25. I, I loved what OC Rob Sale called him. He's got the juice and the wiggle with yeah. the ball in his hands. Yeah, I love the pecking order offensively, yeah. though, for Florida. He mentioned to us it's 273, and that's not an area code. It's number two first, Montero Johnson, number seven, Trevor Etienne, and number three, Trey Wilson. That's the order of getting the football. They'll run and mash right up the middle. Good churning of the legs out to the 31-yard line by Etienne and Braden Adams, the guy that finally stopped him. And you mentioned Wilson a little bit earlier. He got the football in his hands. Last week, he only touched it three times. And a lot of that was because the Florida Gators were behind in the chains early on. They couldn't get him down the field. They're going to find different ways for these skilled position players to touch the football. We still haven't seen Ricky Pearsall yet, one of their best receivers, but eight catches a week ago. Wilson in motion. Here he comes again in space, tries to split a couple of defenders. Let him swing on the outside and find a matchup. Third down and one, and it's going to be close. It'll depend on the spot. ETN hauled down from behind, and it will move the chains as we send it down now to Stormy Bonatoni. Well, just speaking a little bit more on Trey Wilson, Coach Napier said that they're going to try to be intentional to get him the ball. During fall camp, he had a real knack for the big play, and Graham Mertz even told me he feels so comfortable with him. He's never seen a young guy who's that fast that twitchy and retains information the way that he does. So a lot of excitement for the young guy. Yeah, of course, uh, his dad, a very good player in his own day. Eugene, a two-time Super Bowl champion with New England. Mertz, play action, has the time, dances, steps up, and he'll slide out to the 40, takes a hit there, and is pushing and shoving, and late flags are flying. Personal foul, late hit, defense, 15 yard penalty, an automatic first down. First down, and the penalty will push them across midfield. ETN is the back in the pistol. Pearsall, the birthday boy today, is in motion. More play action, and here's Ricky Pearsall on the edge. Shoved out of bounds around the 41 yard line. He is 5 for 5, 29 yards here in the first quarter. Big hole up the middle. ETN inside the 25 to the outside and into the red zone for Florida. Big old Damian George <laughs> came around the corner and busted a hole open for him. Yeah, you saw the same thing I saw, the Alabama transfer Damian George. <laughs> he goes 6'6", 350. Oh, a little razzle-dazzle. Yeah, Wildcat in this final minute of the first quarter. It is Trey towards the goal line. Ball pops out and they're going to mark him down inside the one. Ruling on the field, the runner was down inside the one That's yard line. That's what I'm going to call a little razzle-dazzle. All right, you get the quarterback line on the outside, you fake the handoff. I'm going to call him PT, perimeter Trey, because that's where Trey's been, out on the perimeter. They're going fast here. Mertz will keep, and he's in. 99-yard drive for Florida. And the new LED light display. And the Gators have run it. 75% of the time here in the first quarter. Let's see if they can get the PAT right this time. On its way, and it is good. 13-0, Gators. This boot into the end zone.
course, a former Gator Ben Shelton had a huge run of his own deep into the U.S. Open field, reached the semifinals. Yeah, a lot of folks in Gatorland were watching, hoping that Shelton would have made the final. But going back to that last drive, that first drive for McNeese, they were able to run the football. They got some... Another uh, bit of a, a gut punch for the Southeastern Conference so tonight. Miami takes care of Florida, of uh, Texas A&M down in South Florida. Yeah, I know a lot of Gator fans here don't want to hear Miami winning, but they took care of an SEC opponent. Yeah. That's a big job, good job there by Cristobal and the crew. And uh, let's see, Kirk, tonight, right now, Texas is winning in Tuscaloosa, 10-3 in the second quarter. Yeah, coin of yours already, putting up some points. Here comes Trayon Webb again. Had one carry last week against Utah. He picks up a first down here. They get more touches this year if they lost Cam Carroll with a preseason knee injury. The transfer from Tulane. Where they fake it that time to Wilson. And they find Pearsall who takes a hit and hangs on. At the McNeese 45. And a first down pickup of 18 yards. 47 yards. That's after... His career high last week of 333 yards passing. And run it with Webb. Trey on to the 40. Micah Davey with the tackle. Got a lot of offensive linemen pulling. Not standing one spot. They're getting extra pullers and extra blockers at the point of attack. Whether it's Montreal Johnson, Trevor Etienne. Trey on Webb doesn't matter the running back. They're getting extra guys in front and allowing the running backs to pick and choose the hole to go through. They were really hammering it home with the guys this week in practice execution. A ton of film study and repetition and routine. Eugene Wilson the third down to the 30-yard line. And again, Jackson with a nice hit. That's another perimeter throw for Wilson. He's doing everything outside of the hash, right? So in between the numbers and the hash is where Wilson is getting the football, putting a lot of pressure on the safeties and corners to have to come up and tackle. That's the fourth time he's gotten his hands on the ball, 50 yards here in the first half. He'll stay in the game, line up offset in the backfield. Now they'll move him. It's like a shot at the end zone. They'll look his way. The pump fake from Mertz just out of the reach of Pearsall and it's his first misfire of the night yeah he had him too had him wide open Webb stays in the backfield so each guy has really been a featured back on each of the three possessions it's Webb's turn and he's down inside the 25 that'll set him actually they're gonna say he was down at the 25 so it's a third down and five for Florida Kylan Armstead with the tackle Empty set here for Mertz. They'll set up a receiver screen for the back. Webb, nice cut, first down. Into the red zone for Florida. Webb keeps, cut down around the six yard line. That was uh, Silvera that got under him. You ever hear those terms, gaping hole? Mm. Uh, that's what a gaping hole is on the left side of the offensive line. We've seen it throughout the game so far. The left tackle, left guard, they're getting tremendous push on that side, and they're caving down near the center, and it's just an easy, easy look for the running backs. Another long drive. Here's the tenth play as they try and push this possession over the five-minute mark. They will run it again. The cutback, and down to the two-yard line goes Webb. Four-star recruit. He's got a championship pedigree out of Trinity Christian Academy. Play action, Mertz back in the end zone, and it's dropped. Dante Zanders was wide open. Couldn't haul it in. And Zanders knew it. He dropped a for-sure touchdown. That's one of those where you go to the sideline, you got to do 10 push-ups because that is a touchdown. You don't get those opportunities too often. And Xanders immediately knew he had dropped the touchdown. And it's back to Trayon Webb in the backfield. He's got it. He runs it up the middle, and he scores for the first time as a Florida Gator.
Graham Mertz is still learning the offense. Look, he went to the wrong way first. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the empire of the state? Is it uh, Josh? Is it Aaron Rodgers? Is it going to be the New York Giants? <laughs> Second and one, Glance keeps. Nowhere to go. Shamar James, who had 13 tackles last week against Utah, was the first guy on the scene. I like this duel of linebackers. You mentioned Shamar James last week led the team in tackles with 13. We've seen Scooby Williams on every single run play so far. But what Nate Glance, the quarterback for Big Nice, has to understand, you have to be decisive. There is no one, two, three moves. It's one move and go because of the way this Florida defense is able to react. They have not converted yet on a third down tonight. It's third and one. And pre-snap movement. That's Ham, the running back. A little too eager there. The Ball sophomore. Start. Offense number 20. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Four-man pressure, they throw it underneath, and James is right there to make the hit. And it's fourth down. Coordinator Austin Armstrong said he loved how eager his guys were. So many underclassmen, they've been spirited all week long. And they're playing together as a unit again tonight. Good punt coverage this time from the Cowboys. And Florida will have it around their own 25-yard line. They've scored the first three times they've had it. Can they go four for four? Just thinking about airing it out here on first down, and it'll slide out across the 30-yard line. But for Billy Napier and his coaching staff, obviously the opponent is a little different this week, right. but he <laughs> talked about controlling what we can control. And today is all about looking at those mistakes we made a week ago and making sure that we move on from those and make those segments of the game better we know what was said last week after the game versus utah it's we hurt ourselves self-inflicted wounds every coach player we talked to was about self-inflicted wounds and that has not been the case today nice run for montrell johnson this is a, was a good football team they played against and there was a test early on. You're looking to get some confidence. You're looking to get a little momentum. You know you've got Tennessee coming in here next week, and they have certainly established the run game. Montrell Johnson, again behind Richie Leonard, that offensive line maligned by the penalties a week ago has looked strong in opening up some holes. They continue to go off that left tackle and get yards, yards, yards. He's close to 10 yards a carry. Mertz. Looking deep downfield, incomplete. He overthrows Caleb Douglas. Back to the ground, and Johnson immediately taken to the ground. Micah Davey has been impressive, the middle linebacker. Another good day for him, the son of Rowan Davey. <laughs> yeah, former LSU Tiger, Rohan Davey. Also, people forget that Rohan was Tom Brady's backup in New England in the early year for Tom Brady, but... Davey is one of the captains on that defense. Had 12 tackles last week. Third down and 10 here for the Gators. McNeese looking for its first stop of the night. Mertz with time delivers to Pearsall for the first down. Makes the catch at the 34 and a gain of 13. The first down. They run it with Johnson. Inside the 30 and down to the 27. Tackle by Jalen Jackson. I think it's a great point that you brought up, Beth, that each running back has really had their own series. Yeah. Right, Johnson had the first series. ETN had the second series. Trayon Webb, the third series. Now we're right back to Montreal Johnson, and there's no drop-off with either of the backs. Nine carries, 74 yards for Montreal. Stick it in his belly again, inside the 20. Look at the turn of the legs down inside the 15. <laughs> First down, Gators. I think the right side of the offensive line heard me talking bad about him, right? <laughs> because everything was happening on the left side of the offensive line. This time they go to the right, and it's a similar situation. Yeah. They're getting great push. We're also seeing Najee uh, Harris and Lindell Hudson. Good depth up front for the Gators. Here he comes again. Cut down inside the 10. They'll mark him at the 8. 
Trevor Etienne now in the game at tailback. He'll get the call off the left side. The cutback, and he'll stroll into the end zone. Touchdown, Gators. From eight yards out. Go uh, shake Jake Slaughter, 66 to center. Richie Leonard, the left guard. Make sure you go dap them up. Yeah, hey, there you go. Give that, give that to the offensive line. That's how you do it, Etienne. He realizes that offensive line is doing a great job up front, opening holes, playing on the McNeese side of the line of scrimmage. Just another easy run for these tailbacks. That looks like the scepter that the, the, uh, that scepter. the band... Yeah. That the, <laughs> Trey Smack to kick things off. And again, no return, so that'll give us a Four chance. Four seconds remaining in the half here for McNeese State. They'll run it with D'Angelo Durham. Picks up a yard, and let's see if the Cowboys will hustle to run another play or two. Jaden Hill, been calling his name a lot on defense, coming out of the secondary to make the stop again. Yeah, it plays all over the field, right? Playing sort of that star position, so he's sort of like a hybrid linebacker corner safety he does a little bit of everything and he's been impressive in this first half cowboys will let that clock roll and it's halftime at the swamp florida 213 yards rushing the quarterback and all three of the running backs have scored on the ground tonight for the 26 love lead out this game offensively he really didn't like a couple of those third down penalties said when you have an opponent like this every detail is critical and defensively no secret guys stop the run yeah. as you were just <laughs> highlighting <laughs> yeah 212 rush yards combined they ran at 30 of their 42 plays in that first half so back to work for nate glance and back to work for d'angelo durham and he is caught at the line of scrimmage by Cam Jackson up front. Goff spent some time back at his alma mater as a head coach. And now in his second season here, they'll run it again with D'Angelo Durham. Hard to get through or around the 6'6", 360-pounder Cam Jackson. <laughs> yeah, Cam Jackson, Cam Jackson, one of those transfers over at Florida. Last week they had 12 guys who were freshmen, well sorry, 14 true freshmen and eight transfers playing their first game in the Gator uniforms. A little bit better performance today. Four-man pressure, Glance out to the perimeter and incomplete. His intended receiver slipped, Jonathan Harris, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Glance, he's shaking his head because he knew he had a first down. But coming out of the break, Jonathan Harris just didn't get that right foot in the ground, and that's a missed opportunity for the Cowboys. Could have been a first down, and now you're putting to the Gators. For the, Tennessee. Yeah, they're going to give Trey Wilson a chance here. I'm not sure if McNeese will give him a chance here. The Pokes kick it away from him, and it'll bound out of bounds inside the 30. Conference. So the Gators will come out on this first possession with their starters. Here's Montrell Johnson taking the handoff from Graham Mertz. And he's got a 100-yard rusher now. Montrell Johnson, Jr., 12 carries, 101 yards tonight. Receiver screen to Pearsall. Birthday boy gets a nice block on the edge from Wilson, and he reaches midfield. They call him Pretty Ricky. That's what his offensive coordinator calls him. Rob said calls him Pretty Ricky because he's so smooth in and out of his breaks. He's the elder statesman in that room, and everyone looks up to him, and that's the reason why. Four catches, 50 yards. In the next couple of weeks, he should pass his father in terms of their college yardage numbers receiving. Trey Wilson, boy, you feel the buzz in the building whenever he gets his hands on it. And he's close to another first down. Stormy? Well, speaking of Ricky Pearsall's father, there was this great story that made the rounds last year about how when he was a little kid, his dad would toss him the football and he'd get a skittle for every catch. I informed Graham Mertz of this story and he said, I didn't know that. I didn't know he liked sweets, but I think I need to keep some skittles on the sideline. I've been keeping my eye out, guys. No skittles, unfortunately. <laughs> but he deserves some. He deserves some. Well, we need to call Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> there you Mr. go. Mr. Skittle Man on the sideline, the former Seattle Seahawk. A little miscommunication. Yes, this is something offensively you saw last week at Utah. 
and showed up a couple times tonight so far. Just barely got the snap off, and it won't matter. The hookup is there, Merch to Pearsall, into the red zone for Florida on a first down. That's a hookup of 23 yards. The hash mark, watch Pearsall on the left side of the screen. He just streaks behind the linebackers. This is what happens when you run the football effectively. All the attention is on the running backs. Montreal Johnson, nobody sees Pearsall streaking across the field. Merch now 12 of 15, 128 yards. Has kept his jersey clean too, no sacks. Allowed by that offensive front. They'll run it off the right edge. Johnson, the junior from New Orleans. That's a great point, Beth. He has a clean jersey. Last week was sacked six times against Utah. That pressure, Morgan Scali, the defensive coordinator at Utah. They brought pressure and stunts and blitzes. And I think this offensive line took it personal this week and having to go up and really defense what teams are going to probably going to come at Florida all season long with pressure, stunts, and blitzes. Like a bunch of formation to the left side. Johnson, oh, nice little move to get something out of nothing there. <laughs> he put, uh, was that Silvera on yeah. his backside? Yeah, that's one of those plays that Silvera tomorrow in film, he's going to want to exit the room because he's in the phone booth and Montreal Johnson just shakes him. More of him. Hit at the two, stays on his feet, and he's in. Touchdown, Florida. Second of the night for Montreal Johnson Jr. This one from five yards out, a good second effort. Uh, Billy Napier was talking about the spark. We need a spark offensively. We didn't have that spark last week. Well, the spark has been the running game. And Montrell Johnson definitely running with authority. Aggressive, angry runs on that last one, reaching across for a touchdown. Boy, and another strong drive for the Gators. They average 10 yards per play as Adam Ahalik knocks it through. 33 zip. Yeah. Florida starting offense tonight. That remains to be seen if they'll head back out there with the comfortable lead. And a pass completion to Cam Thomas for a first down. If you look at that Florida schedule, Kirk, you see Tennessee. I do. Let's see, they're not waiting in the wings yet. I think they're, are they still in action here tonight? Or did they go final efforting? Yeah, they beat Austin P 30 to 13, so. And that's the one that people around here, that's that's what matters. That's a Start the SEC. matchup. Yeah, you're right. Florida has won nine in a row here against the Vols, of course, uh, New Sheriff in town up there last year for Tennessee with that 11-win season. That included a victory over Florida. Out close to midfield here for Makai Paris. Not so much today. Yeah, held him to just 79 yards so far. Only 23 plays have been run. We'll give it back to Cam Thomas. Met in the backfield and thrown for a loss. There's a negative yardage play for... Bryce Thornton, the Frenchman out of College Park, Georgia. So they don't have any seniors back there. No. Just a couple <laughs> of juniors. Six freshmen in their secondary. A ton, the 3D. A ton of freshmen. And they are not afraid. Now whistles and flags before the third down snap. Yeah, I'm not sure that the offensive line was set. And you got to be set for at least a half a beat. And I don't think they were set. False start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Four guys coming for the Gators, and the spy will get the quarterback. He was waiting, TJ Searcy, and he found him. And it's fourth down. That's picture perfect defense. This is what you want. Austin Armstrong, the defensive coordinator. This is what you want from a spy. You send the four-man rush, and you hope that they can collapse the pocket. And if the quarterback steps up, you got the spy standing right there. And that's the true freshman, T.J. Searcy out of Georgia, making the play. There is a look at Austin Armstrong at the ripe old age of 30 years old. And his defense has held McNeese without a third down conversion tonight. They're 0 for 6. 
That'll be down at the 15. Four, all three backs have scored. Yeah, no. Nice job carrying the mail there out across the 35 for a first down. But it's nothing new for Billy Napier, who was telling us this week he comes from a family of coaches, his dad, both of his brothers. No strangers are they to criticism. Uh, but he said it was important. As Stormy was uh, reporting earlier, ETN taken down back at the original line of scrimmage. Uh, they've answered the call from their coach. ETN out of the backfield. Green grass in front of him. Breaking tackles out to midfield. I think one of the things that they realize is that we've got to get the ball to our playmakers. Yeah. In space, handing it off, it doesn't matter. Just get them the ball, let them go to work. Pass play here for the Gators. Mertz. Aaron, now he's got Pearsall. In stride at the five. Touchdown for the birthday boy as Ricky scores another one for the Gators. yard strike from Graham Mertz for, for Ricky Pearsall. For people who didn't watch Graham Mertz at Wisconsin, this is was this is what you saw at Wisconsin. It was run, 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 play action, Mertz to the end zone, and we saw it right here with the Florida Gators offense. It's been run all day, but you got to hit your shots. And that time, Pearsall, he just runs right by Levi Wyatt for the touchdown. Game. Is it still the Pac-12 after dark? Is it the Mount High Showdown still? They still call it that? Uh, it's not played there, but it might still be called that, yes. <laughs> oh, look at his defense. Swarming defense for the Gators right now. That's TJ Searcy again getting after D'Angelo Durham. Their new DC Austin Armstrong said it's been a couple of years. Um, and these guys, this young group, really locked in on bringing the pride back on this side of the football for Florida. They'll run it out of their own end zone, and they're caught behind the line. And a safety for the Florida defense, Jamari Lyons. The safety dance for the Gators student body. I don't know who's more excited, the players or the coordinator. It was something he had to do. Well, it's been a good fit so far for Florida. The fair catch out across the 35 by Tyreek Sapp. Well, that defense has been making plays and actually putting points on the board for them. And now some of the starters will call it a night. Max Brown is out there at quarterback. The redshirt freshman out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he will hand it off to a true freshman, Trayon Webb. Second series of the night for Trayon. He got one in the first half carried it seven times for 33 yards you know I think a lot of people last week thought that the loss to Utah would make coach Billy Napier and the team go out there and, and turn up the heat at practice well that wasn't the case the weather was the heat that was turned yeah. up but it wasn't the approach the approach was us, just let us do what we do go out and execute and that's what they've done so far today three different backs but it's all been the same thing moving forward nothing been going behind I think they're going to mark Webb just short, so it's third down in inches. Last year, Max Brown, a red shirt, didn't get any action. Big senior year that had him passing for almost 3,000 yards and rushing for over 1,000. Scored 61 touchdowns his last year in high school. And they'll run it here for first down yardage out to midfield for Webb. Of course, as you know, Kirk, the, you know, the new era of college football, you're, you're not only recruiting guys to stay, you're, you're yeah, recruiting right. next year's class. A lot of those commits are here. They got a big time quarterback coming in next year who has committed, DJ Lagway. And with the transfer portal situation, so critical to keep that momentum, keep that positivity going all year long. 
But I think one of the things that we see with the transfer portal when it comes to quarterbacks is experience. Yeah. You know, guys who have played a lot of college football. I mean, half the SEC has got new starters this yeah. year. And you think about the starters who are coming in. These are guys who are experienced, played a lot of football. We talked Graham Mertz. You tell me where you can find a quarterback in college football that started 32 games yeah. somewhere else. That's the experience that Billy Napier was looking for, especially when you lose Anthony Richardson to the NFL draft. Second down and seven might be the last snap of the quarter here for the Gators. And a good throw on the move for Brown to find Aiden Mazzell. Another one of those freshmen. And a first down to the 31. That's a pickup of 16. This is what happens when you run the ball effectively. Just things open up. The field seems to be a lot bigger, a lot wider. I know it's 53 and a half in terms of width, but it seems like the field gets a little bit bigger when you're running the ball effectively. Big hole up the middle. Webb puts his head down at the five. And it's first and goal, Gators. Trayon Webb getting into the end zone. All of them have been involved. All of them have cheered each other on, but I think they've pushed each other as well, knowing that I've got to be on my A game knowing I may not get another carry the way that everyone's running the football. Six rushing touchdowns for the team. McNeese going to air it out. And a nice reach back for the breakup intended for Harris. That was Jakeem Jackson, a freshman out of Kissimmee, Florida, that they are really high on. They love his potential. How many times do we say freshman in this back end for Florida? Uh, it's a, a ton of young freshmen. I, I marked them all on my board. And I'm saying, wow. How I'm many guys? Six. Yeah, yeah I've, six. I got about six of them. Yeah. And look, last week was their first opportunity, and they played well. You know, outside of that first play of the game, so to get that experience as they head into SEC play next week, this is what Coach Armstrong wanted from his guys in the back. Yeah, they'll be in prime time next week against Tennessee moving forward if they're going to compete. Yeah, but it all starts with Tennessee next week. And, oh boy, will this place be, will the joint be, <laughs> joint be jumping? Yeah, oh yeah. It, it'll be a packed house for sure. And I know I have a lot more confidence in Florida with number 15, Graham Mertz as my quarterback. Because he's going to bring in, I think, not just the game managing factor of it, but when he's able to hand the ball off the way he's doing tonight or the way he did tonight early in the game, it's going to slow things down for the offense, but slow things down more for the other side of the football, that Tennessee offense. Good pursuit again by the Gator defense to get to Colby Ham. When update from Tuscaloosa Kirk, Texas has scored two touchdowns in the first minute and 10 seconds of the fourth quarter and they are up 27-16 and yes people are going to say it if they win Texas is back I can already <laughs> hear it now man throw on second and 10 and broken up again by Jakeem Jackson Jakeem Jackson the freshman from Kissimmee Florida just doing a nice job staying on top see watch the patience by Jackson he stays there and then breaks on the football. I think as he gets older, the confidence will come. He was going to pick that ball off. Cowboys just one for seven on the night. They've only run 32 plays. Deep ball, incomplete. And Trey will let that bounce and then try. thought about running up on it. Went to UConn. His only opportunity to go out and play at UConn was the final game. Then it hurts his leg. He had one season left of eligibility. And he got an email from Florida. Here's a kid who's a lifelong Florida Gator fan. And he got an email to be a preferred walk-on. And now he was going to take a snap as a Gator. On first down, Michael Leon will pitch to Webb. 
And a loss on the play, and that's going to be another new running back, by the way, as well. That's Eddie Battle who's out there. Let's see what Michael Leon can do here on third and 14 for Florida. And they'll jet sweep it with Mazel. And he's out across the 20 to the 21-yard line, and it's fourth down. Micah Davey making the tackle. Andy G. And who is this stranger coming on the field? Is that a punt? That is a punter. Is that a punter? <laughs> for the Gators tonight. First time. They scored touchdowns on all seven of their prior possessions. And now we say hello to Jeremy Croshaw on the field for the first time. Jonathan Harris is the deep back for McNeese. The punt's a wobbler. And it'll take a couple of Florida hops. And McNeese State will have it at their own 32-yard line. It plays as well. Simmons keeps. Leaps over a defender. Gets out close to the 40. Jaden Robinson, the linebacker, was there out of Lake City, Florida. Another one of the freshmen. Going to be third down and four. Jalen Milrow, the guy calling the shots this year for the... Crimson Tide. Third down and four. Pressure coming. Simmons eludes it. Throws it out into the flat. They had a first down and may have given it up. Clink with the catch. Let's see if they give him the forward progress and they do. Yeah, first that, down. That official right there saw the line the game was made and it's a nice job there by Simmons. First down and 10, the run for Cam Thomas. And Jamari Lyons able to stuff things in the middle. Jamari had the safety earlier in the game. A little surprised that Cam Thomas didn't get more touches throughout this ball game. Last week was electric, he had a 91 yard kickoff return. I thought they will find more ways to get him the football. That's what I asked Coach Goff, like, how did you get him the ball? Because he's electric, but a uh, junior from uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast Junior College. The spark plug for this offense. Second down and nine. Simmons on the QB draw. Gets it out across the 45. Kelby Collins, another one of the freshmen, making the tackle. And it'll bring up third down again. These are huge reps for this Florida defense. A lot of depth that they're trying to build. This is a young football team, very young. Third and six for the Pokes. Simmons running out of time. Gets out of the grasp of Norman to stay on his feet. And he'll run out of bounds close to midfield. That'll be a couple of yards shy. Will Norman just couldn't wrap him up. And they're going to go for it here on fourth down at midfield. Some of the ability that Simmons shows you is he's never out of a play. A little bit different. Glance, the better passer. But Simmons, he's finding ways to keep plays alive for the Cowboys. Timeout. Timeout. McNeese, they're first. Battle's about eight yards deep. Well, they're going to throw out of the end zone and completes. Pass was behind. Let's see, the fifth tight end we're seeing tonight, Scott Isaacs. Robbie Ashford the stole the show, though. <laughs> <laughs> the backup quarterback stole the show. Last. Red zone Robbie. What do you have, three <laughs> rushing touchdowns? Sure though. did. Sure did. It'll be a good matchup tonight against the Cal Bears. Yeah. I think it's uh, their first trip out west since they played for the national championship. Though. That's right. The Rose Bowl. Yeah, Rose Bowl. Nick Marshall was the quarterback at Auburn. Has the SEC has dominated the national championship game. And with Alabama right now down against yeah. Texas. Down 10? <laughs> down 10 late in that game. Gators do not see Auburn or Alabama during the regular season. Battle. 
First down yardage out to the 15. And that will lead that clock. LSU bounce back for them. They're winning big. Oregon is also losing, as is Wisconsin. So <laughs> could be some upsets tonight. And here you were thinking that week two was not going to have fireworks in college football, <laughs> Beth. Shame on you. <laughs> it's the fireworks, man. It's just the games that we didn't expect are living up to some upsets. Oh, almost pick six country. Man, we got a flag down as well, or is that a towel? Flag down on the far the side of the field. Player, offense number 89 was covered up at the snap. Five yard penalty, replay first down. Well, for the most part, uh, Billy Napier and his coaching staff can check a lot of those boxes, some of the things they needed to either fix or uh, make it look a little bit better. They just turn the ball over as I say that. Really on the field was a fumble recovered by the offense, second down. <laughs> Doesn't matter who carries the football. We know about the backs earlier in the game, but this time you start to get down that depth chart, you want to earn your keep a little bit. Yeah, that was a fumble, but it was recovered by battle. After video review, the ruling is the ball was recovered by McNeese State. First and goal at the eight-yard line. The offensive player never had firm control of the ball after he fumbled it, and then it was subsequently covered by the defender. And you know the Florida defense is going to take this as a big old <laughs> challenge. Yes, they will. To pitch the shutout tonight. Simmons hands it off. Inside the five, touchdown! Cowboys get on the board off the turnover. Colby Ham takes it in. Extra point, Garrison Smith splits the uprights. There you go. That's a happy and it's 49 to 17. And <laughs> that's something to build on right there. That's a that's a nice break for them. It's a bad beat for some others. <laughs> All right, Marshall and Etienne back deep. Smith and booted away. And it's short again, just like the opening kickoff. And Gators will have it at the 35. In uniform in his seventh collegiate season, getting his first chance here at Florida. That's Carlson Joseph who is now in at tailback. Yeah, we're getting down on the depth chart now. <laughs> yeah, fifth, fifth guy. Well, yeah. The, the, the first three that we saw all uh, turned in some big numbers. They've run for 316 yards tonight as a team. And uh, Montrell Johnson Jr., two touchdowns over 100 yards rushing. Trayon Webb, two touchdowns. Trevor Etienne, a score. And the quarterback, Graham Mertz, also rushed for a score. Mertz also threw a 50-yard touchdown. Happy 23rd birthday to Billy Pearsall on the receiving end. <laughs> yeah, Pearsall, also Caleb Douglas, another birthday today as well. Mm -hmm. So had some Gators. Look, this is a home opener too. You know, a lot of these fans can now be calm for one week. After a lot of disappointed fans, I think a week ago, of the performance at Utah. But I think this one, I think they're a little happier with this performance. The run out to midfield. And again, that's Joseph. Florida has run, uh, let's see, 73 plays now, 51 of those on the ground. Uh, six yards per rush, seven yards per play with 32 first downs. The school record is 36 wow. first downs. I, I don't think they'll reach that as we are into the final minute. End the round for another first down. 
So the Gators uh, will get ready now for Tennessee to come to town here next week in a big showdown at the Swamp. And the uh, opener in the SEC for Florida. And that's a doozy, because after that, you've got what you would consider four winnable games heading into the cocktail party mm -hmm. in late October. And they will take their home opener. 49-7, to seven, the final. Florida a winner over McNeese.